Hey there YouTubers, so I'm back from the cruise that I was on and um, I took a bunch of pictures of accessibility stuff. Unfortunately, I may have made the same mistake I made on the last cruise with the pictures. Um, I took a bunch of pictures with my phone and then I also took a bunch of pictures with my digital camera. Um, so the digital camera pictures will be easy to get on my computer because there's an SD card and I can just take that out and load them in the computer. But the ones I took on my phone um, are proving more difficult to get off. I tried them uh, on my desktop and I tried them on my laptop and for some reason the Bluetooth on my phone is doesn't want to cooperate with the Bluetooth on my computers so unless I take the micro SD card out of my phone um, I don't really know how I would get the pictures on my computer. Um, I suppose I could uh, upload upload them all to Facebook um, and then download them all from Facebook um, but we'll see. Um, I might have some accessibility stuff on my digital camera hopefully um, most of it I think is on my phone but I will do my best to explain everything about the accessibility of the ship um, so that if I can't get those pictures um, at least you'll get explanations about that okay so I've got I, I, I kept a list of you can't really see but uh, there we go um, so I kept a list of the good and bad things that the good the things I liked about the cruise and the things I didn't like about the cruise and sort of there's one middle of the road thing um, not all of it relates to accessibility so I'm gonna ignore the stuff that doesn't um, the hallways on this cruise ship were much larger than I'm used to and this was the carnival sensation so know that if you book a cruise on the carnival sensation you're gonna have large hallways which is pretty cool I think uh, it's helpful as a wheelchair user. Um, also, the rugs that were in the hallways were not very thick, which meant it was easier to push on them. That was great as well. <clears throat> okay, that's not <clears throat> So there was, this is sort of accessibility-ish. There was a, a a regular bathroom mirror and then there was a smaller uh, bathroom mirror for like shaving or whatnot that I used to put my contacts in which was awesome because I could sort of lean over the sink t to this other side mirror uh, and get close enough to put my contacts in whereas the regular mirror was further away and therefore harder to use for my contacts um, so unfortunately those are the only really good accessibility things about the ship um i will say f before i get into the middle stuff and the bad stuff um the the sensation was probably the least accessible cruise ship i've been on <clears throat> it was my fifth cruise my second with carnival i've been on three with princess cruises um and there have been videos of those other cruises i believe at least most the first the first princess cruise there was a video I did a video of that back in like 2010 ish 10 11 somewhere around there um, and I think I did videos of the other ones as well um, uh, just hold on a second I gotta pause I'm back okay so <laughs> as soon as I 
Well, actually, before I open the door of the room, all of the accessible rooms, meaning my stateroom, and the accessible bathrooms had automatic doors, which you would think is awesome. However, <laughs> it can be awesome, but it can also be not so awesome. First of all, if you didn't, most of the time when there are automatic doors, like a push button thingy, I don't use them. I do it manually. It's, I don't know if it's like force of habit or whatever, but um, it took me a long time to get used to pressing the button. So there's that. Doing it manually, all of the automatic doors were super duper, blah, super duper heavy if you tried to manually open them. So that was a pain in the butt. Uh, also, the automatic doors, sorry about messing with my ear, I've got a scab in it. <laughs> it's bothering me. Um, the automatic doors were either very, very quick to close or too slow to close. Uh, the ones for the bathrooms generally were too slow. Now it wasn't an issue for some of them because some of them had an outside door, which was the one you push the button for, and then stall us uh, multiple stalls, so you could just go right in the stall, close that door, and then you wouldn't have to worry about the automatic door how long it took to close. However, there was one uh, accessible bathroom on the tenth deck, the Lido deck, which is where the food was and a lot of the entertainment stuff, um, pools and whatnot, hot tubs, uh, pool and hot tubs, by the way, were the least accessible I've ever had on cruises. Um, I don't, I think I, uh, I have pictures of that somewhere, but I might not be able to get them. Anyway, there was an area that, there was basically an area which the two hot tubs and the pool were enclosed in that prevented water from going out from the pool and the hot tubs too far. So basically it was like a barrier. However, that made it less accessible because it meant that I would have to get over that barrier and then into the pool slash hot tub instead of just going in the pool directly or the hot tub directly. So that was a pain in the butt. Uh, I didn't actually even use the hot tubs or pool. Um, partly because of that, partly because I just didn't feel like it. Um, totally forgot what I was talking about. Oh, I think it was the automatic doors. Yes. So the accessible bathroom on the 10th floor, first of all, it was only one stall. So there weren't divisions or star stall doors. So you had to wait for the automatic door to close. And it took, oh, 10 to 12 seconds to close. Now I know you're thinking, okay, that's great because why? Because if you have a um, um, power wheelchair, I couldn't think of the word, sorry. Uh, that's all the pot I smoked back in the 60s. Burned my brain out. No, I'm not quite that old. Uh, um, if you have a power wheelchair, it could be slow, or I suppose if you have a manual wheelchair and you're just slow getting around, that would be great. Yeah, 10, 12 seconds. However, if you really need to go to the bathroom and you open that door and you want to get on the toilet as quickly as you can, it's really bad if the door closes behind you at a very slow pace because then you're sitting there waiting for the door to close so that you can lock it so that nobody else can get in while you're doing your business. So I find that found that to be annoying. Um, some people might find it to be good. The other thing about the bathroom on the 10th deck is that it was unisex, the accessible bathroom. So there was a ladies room right next to it. It was ladies room and then unisex accessible bathroom. Clearly it was an afterthought and it was previously a men's room that was converted into an accessible bathroom. However, because it was unisex, that meant that sometimes I was waiting for uh, women to come out of that bathroom. I will say non-women without disabilities to come out of that bathroom. If they have a disability, go fine, go use it. But there were 
uh, several times I waited for women that didn't have disabilities, um, or at least didn't have visible disabilities, because I don't really know. They might have had some internal stuff going on. But anyway, there were several times I had to wait for women that had non either non-visible disabilities or no disabilities. I'm going to guess they didn't have disabilities. Um, in fact, I know for sure one didn't because she tried to get in the ladies' room, saw that it was full, and then went in the um, unisex accessible bathroom. So clearly it was an afterthought and they converted the previous men's bathroom that was there. Uh, which was annoying. Um, so on the 11th deck, there were no accessible bathrooms. The 11th deck was like the sun, uh, the deck like you went to if you wanted to get sun, uh, which I love. I love sun, so I went up there quite a bit. Unfortunately, I couldn't use the bathroom out there without help. There were bathrooms on that deck, but they had lips about that high which isn't impossible for me to get over. I was able to do it. Again, the doors were heavy, even though they weren't um, automatic. But also, coming out, there were drainage grates in front of the doors, so my front casters sometimes got stuck in those. So that was a pain in the butt. Uh, okay, now, moving on from the doors and the bathroom stuff, um, I will say the accessible bathrooms on nine, deck nine were fine, deck eight were fine. I don't think I ever used it on deck seven. In fact, I'm not sure there were any. Moving on anyway from that, um, I got into my room and there were bunk beds in an accessible room. Now this might have been, or that might have been my fault because there, if you've never booked a cruise, you don't know, but if you have, you'll, you know that there are three, well, if you have a disability, there are three different types of accessible rooms. There's fully accessible, there's accessible from one side, which I didn't understand before this cruise, and then there's another option, which I don't really remember right now. Anyway, so fully accessible, of course, means you can get to, assuming there are two beds, you can get to both beds, you can get to everything. Accessible from one side, I now realize means... Well, I knew it meant that you would only be able to get to one bed. I thought that would be fine. What I didn't realize is that they could have bunk beds, which, so, um, the cruise was for, I got my mom the cruise for her birthday, uh, and I went with her on it, and she's uh, mid-70s, so she wasn't able to climb up and I was actually more able than her but she didn't want me to because she thought it was dangerous so what we did was we moved the um, mattress from the top bunk on the floor so I slept on the floor on that mattress and she slept in the, like the regular bed so that was annoying uh, and quite unexpected I know now for sure uh, that uh, I should book a fully accessible room instead of one that's uh, only single or si one side accessible. So I guess that's on me. Um, definitely did not expect bunk beds. Okay, I mentioned about, oh, there were thresholds on every door to get out on any of the uh, decks around the edge of the boat, which I'm not used to. Uh, Princess Cruises, I've never encountered that. It's always been flat. But there were lips, again, actually big lips, like like that, uh, in the thresholds, which made going out on those side decks, which is nice to view, like, scenery and whatnot, impossible. Or, not impossible, but very difficult. Um, so I didn't, I only did it once. Um, oh, the main dance area on deck 10 was not accessible. It had stairs on both sides. That was annoying. Um, <laughs> the beverage dispensers in, so like water, lemonade, iced tea, stuff like that, uh, in the, um, buffet area were too high. First of all, you had to reach up quite high and over other things to get the cups. 
then you had to reach up even higher to get the ice or the beverage, so that wasn't cool. Um, this isn't really an accessibility thing, but the elevator buttons were quite strange. So there were elevators, let's say, on both two sides, but you had to press the buttons on both sides if you wanted to, to have a chance at either side. Um, which doesn't make sense to me. I've never encountered an elevator like that. Usually you press one button and all of the elevators in the area respond to that one button, but it wasn't that way on this ship. Um, <laughs> I mentioned about no accessible bathrooms on the sun deck. Only one accessible bathroom on the Lido deck and that it was slow. Um, and that it was the unisex one, whereas so the ladies essentially had more bathrooms than the men on that deck. And it was even worse if you had the disability. Um, I did see a few other wheelchair users on the ship. Two, at least two or three others. At least two others. I know I saw two others, possibly a, a third. Um, that's all I have for information about the ship and accessibility. However, um, there were two stops, one, well, two, three, if you count the last stop, Miami, which is where we started. Um, we went to Jamaica, that was the first stop, then to Grand Cayman. Grand Cayman, I was not able to do anything, actually. You, um, you know what? I, I, I'm going to upload, the, I'm, I'm going to attach the picture at the end of this video. Uh, I got my knees all scraped up because the we couldn't actually dock at in Grand Cayman. You have to go on a water shuttle, and my knees got all scraped up trying to get back on the ship um, because it was there was such a violent thunderstorm that day that uh, unfortunately I wasn't able to do the excursion I had planned. Um, my mom really likes kayaking, so I had planned an excursion for us to go kayaking in the mangroves on Grand Cayman, and then we were going to pet some stingrays. Couldn't do that. We didn't even actually get off the shuttle on Grand Cayman uh, because it, it, the water was just so treacherous. Um, and so we, we got on the shuttle from the cruise ship, went to the island, but then decided not to get off on the island we decided just to go straight back to the ship um, partially just because it was so dangerous I mean the the ramp I, I, I tried to get a video but I wasn't quick enough the ramp was from the shuttle to the island was doing this constantly and what happened was uh, one of the people that went off the shuttle in front of us slipped and broke her ankle and they had to get an ambulance um, to bring her to the hospital so we were like you know what we're we're just gonna we're, we're gonna stay on the shuttle go back to the ship that ended up being really dangerous but we, we managed to get back on the ship um, like I said my knees have got all scraped up I have a picture of that however in Jamaica I do know some accessibility stuff because we were able to do that stop. Uh, I planned a snorkeling excursion, which ended up being really cool. It's the second time I've done it. I didn't get a video of the snorkeling this time because I already have one of it. There's a video of that on my channel. So if you haven't seen it, definitely search for that. Um, so the snorkeling was cool and the people that uh, were our like guides, the company that we did it through, uh, they were great. They just carried my wheelchair right onto the ship. It was glass, a glass bottom boat. Uh, so there's, as far as I know, there's only one in Jamaica. So if you go there and do the snorkeling, do the glass bottom boat, they're really nice. They carried the wheelchair right onto the ship. I, you know, I'm pretty, um, mobile out of my chair. So I just sort of hopped on myself. Um, they were super nice and helpful with accessibility stuff. And um, 
the the person that actually went in the water with my mom and I, because it was my mom's first time, it was my, my second time, as I mentioned, um, they had um, a lifesaver, you know, those big round thingies, not the candy. <laughs> um, but he, so basically we held on to that and the guide did all the swimming and we just sort of looked around and did stuff. It was really cool. And if you are thinking about doing that, I suggest that company, um, Glass Bottom Boat Snorkel. Um, however, there were some problems in Jamaica with accessibility. There were actually quite a few ramps getting to the boat. But then when I needed to go to the bathroom after the excursion, the bathroom in the marina was up a flight of about, I'd say, it had to be at least 10 steps, probably closer to 14, 15. I didn't count. And I was, at first I was like, you know what, I guess I'll just go up there and do it. And someone, one of the locals was like, no, no, there's, actually it was more like, oh, no, no, man, there's a bathroom. That's my bad Jamaican accent. Uh, but he was like, no, there's a bathroom right near the port um, that's accessible. So I was like, oh, great. It wasn't accessible. It was more accessible than like the 14 or however many steps of the other one. But um, it w there was still a step about that high up. For, well, there were two bathrooms. There was a step up to get to the two bathrooms, and then there was another step up to get in the men's room or in the women's room. So it was two steps, uh, and the stall itself was not accessible, so I couldn't close the door. What are you going to do? I had to go to the bathroom. I had to deal with it. Um, so that was kind of frustrating, but other than that, there were quite a few ramps on, like, or curb cuts on sidewalks and whatnot. So it wasn't too, too bad, but... Um, in terms of bathrooms, definitely not cool and with accessibility. Anyway, I think that's all for the cruise. Um, but if I think of something else, I don't think I'm going to add to this video because it's already 22 and a half minutes. And I'm going to add some pictures, as I mentioned. Um, so I think that's it. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Don't forget to subscribe. And I don't know if you noticed, but I got some shirts for my channel. I got this one. I got another one. And I'm probably going to get a third. Um, if you like them, you can get them on teespring.com. There's also uh, some other stuff like uh, hoodies and mugs and a whole bunch of crap, basically. But... Um, Again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time. And look out for those pictures that are going to be coming up very, very soon. Bye-bye.